yo, yo, yo. Happy Thursday, everybody. July 20th. This month is flying by. I woke up feeling like the greatest of all time. That's why I'm rocking the Ali shirt. And I hope that you guys are having a great time. Because you are joining me, Michael Matthew, here on your favorite show in the land. These are the Braves. And these are the Braves. These are the the Braves. You know what it is. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of The Breaks, the show that's here to give you all of the latest and greatest when it comes to the breaking news across the sports world, baby. I am here, Michael, to bring you everything that you need, but we usually start on the hardwood floor, but we know that, you know, the NBA season is kind of way past us, even Summer League, which I'm going to talk about, uh, but I, I got to take us to the gridiron, talk with our NFL break down, baby. Teams have reported to camp. Training camp is here. A lot of teams got guys showing up. You got the rookies starting it all off and the quarterbacks, and they're getting more and more players are showing up to camp, baby. I'm so excited. Football is here. It's so much fun. You even have the media days going on in college football. So football is here. I hope you're ready. For my NFL fans out there, you know what that means. We're close to fantasy football drafts. I'm so excited. I've I've won my league the last couple years, so I feel like I'm an expert, baby. So if you need some help, make sure that you tap in with me every Thursday here in fantasy television, baby. So I'm going to help you out and tell you the teams who you are. You should break your neck to follow to start off here in training camp because it's going to be some very interesting camps out there. Number one, I'm going to start with the rookies. Texans, Panther, you have the first two picks, first two quarterbacks of the draft. Bryce Young there with Carolina. And then you have my guy C.J. Stroud there with the Texans. We're going to be watching these young fellas. Most likely they're going to be given the keys right away to their franchise. So we want to see how they're going to show up at camp. You're going to hear a lot of reports that they struggle. You're going to hear some reports that they're balling, but we're going to have our eyes on these two teams. The 49ers is another team that you should break your neck to follow in training camp because their quarterback situation is really weird right now. Brock Purdy, he's he's trying to return from injury with the injured elbow. They signed Sam Darnold. And then you have the elephant in the room, Trey Lance, the third overall pick from a few years back. He's healthy. He's ready to go. Everybody's expecting Brock Purdy to eventually get his job back when he returns. But what if Trey Lance balls out? He's a guy that's talented like a Mahomes with his ability to run, throw the ball, throw the ball at different angles. He's a guy that could truly be an X factor for a team that is so close to getting their birth into the Super Bowl. So I'm going to have my eyes on them and you should too. The next team, the Green Bay Packers. Jordan Love is now the starting quarterback there. They have put together a roster offensively and defensively to make him compete, but no one believes in them really. People are saying the Detroit Lions. People are saying the Minnesota Vikings. Hell, people even like the Chicago Bears um, over there with uh, Fields at quarterback. But I'm telling you, Jordan Love is going to be ready to play. We have to remember Aaron Rodgers sat so many years behind Brett Favre. And when he showed up, he showed out and balled out. And we got a new superstar. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan Love is balling out with Romeo Dobbs, with Christian Watson, the two young tight ends they drafted in this draft. We know they have running backs with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. They're a team to look out for. Jordan Love is a guy that we need to be watching throughout training camp because we're going to hear reports all all weeks long when it comes to this training camp thing that he's playing well, he's playing bad. But we want to know what the Green Bay Packer fans should expect. And my final team, the Atlanta Falcons, Desmond uh, Ryder, Reader is there, and people are unsure who 
who's going to be the best team in AFC South? There's no more Tom Brady with the Buccaneers. The Saints, they added Derek Carr, so people are expecting them to be the favorites. But Atlanta can really sneak up on some guys. They, they drafted B. John Robinson in the first round, who's a baller, and I expect for him to come in right away and ball. You have Drake London there doing his thing, the former USC guy. And Kyle Pitts, well, he finally joined the top echelon of tight ends. He was drafted so high, everybody expected so highly of them. So I'm going to have my eyes on them. So those are some teams that you should be breaking your neck to follow in training cap, other than, you know, of course, the team that you will be rooting for this year, man. But DeAndre Hopkins, he has chose a team that he will be in training camp with, and it's the Tennessee Titans. Like, what? I, I, I couldn't believe that this was a team he chose. Clearly, the guy's about his check because this is a team that no one expects to win. Um, in that division, Jacksonville looks like they're going to be the team to beat. Trevor Lawrence is a baller. He's going into his third season. He looks like he is one of those guys that's trying to be a top-five quarterback. They built a team around them, so I believe that Jacksonville is a class of that division. But De DeAndre Hopkins clearly went there for the money because you have Tannehill who has been up and down with his whole run with the Titans. Derrick Henry, another year with him. Of course, we expect for him to dominate, but we know how the shelf life of running backs are, so we're going to have our eyes on him. They have Burks that they drafted last year in the first round from Arkansas, but Man, the, the guy Hopkins could have went to Buffalo, could have went to Kansas City to try to win the Super Bowl, but he decided to go to the Titans. So it's a very interesting pick. Uh, he said tighten up, so I believe he's ready and prepared to play with them. But winning, if that's something that he really wanted to do, you went to the wrong team, Mr. Hopkins. You should have signed with the Chiefs of Buffalo if you wanted to compete for a Super Bowl. But, hey, go get your money. I, I have to respect it. But I have to talk about a group of guys guys who doesn't get their money when they should be getting their money and that's the running back position um my favorite position when it comes to the pros I don't know why these guys can't get paid. Like, the players need to be paid more out the gates. Maybe that's something that can help them because we do know once these guys get closer to 30 that some of them do break down. Our teams just kind of give up on them because they're like, hey, you're too old. We're not paying you any money. But how some of these guys' contracts are set up, they aren't able to get their big paycheck until 27 and that might be too late so we have to figure something out uh with this and when you think about the game of football i know people are saying uh the wide receiver position is more important it's not important if you don't have a great quarterback to throw them the ball but if you can put together a nice offensive line and run the ball it can take you to the next level speaking of the titans that's why they've been able to win games period because they put together a solid o-line and then they have one of the better running backs that we have ever ever seen in Derrick Henry. So running backs can help you win. You look at the guys who were in the Final Four last year when it comes to the Bengals, the Chiefs, the Niners, the Eagles. Each of those teams had running backs who were ballers or that emerged to help push their team over the top. We already seen what Christian McCaffrey did right when he went to the Niners, helped take them to the next level, nearly got them to the Super Bowl, but their quarterback injuries hurt them. The Eagles, Miles Sanders balled the entire year. He was one of the better backs. It's crazy that they let him go, but he was a key figure into that offense and the reason why Jalen Hurts was able to go to the Super Bowl with the Eagles. With the Bengals, Joe Mixon has been a baller for for years, he is a guy that can catch the ball, run the ball. He can block in the passing game. He can do so much, and without him, you know, it'll be much tougher for Joe Burrow if you knew that he were only dropping back and pass. And even with the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes is amazing, one of the all-time greats already. But what took the Chiefs to the next level last year was they finally figured out what to do with their running backs. Isaiah Pacheco was a guy that they could pound the ball to. He continues to fall forward whenever he's running. He added an attitude to that offense that they clearly needed to help put them over the top. And that's not even mentioning Jarek McKinnon, who's one of the better blocking running backs in the NFL when it comes to protecting a quarterback. If you don't believe me, type in his name, go and check out the highlights of the big-time blocks that he has. And then a man caught nine touchdowns out of the back 
backfield. So you can't tell me that this position isn't important. This position is much needed for teams, especially if they want to get put over the top. So they need to find a way to pay these guys. You know, you got Saquon Barkley who's like, hey, maybe I need to just, just fall back and let them know that I am a very important piece. And if the Giants don't have Saquon Barkley, they will be T-R-A-S-H trash. Ooh. They need Saquon Barkley to compete because Daniel Jones, though they paid him that money, he is not that guy. Josh Jacobs, he is that guy that pushed that offense forward with the Raiders. They have to pay these running backs, but I don't know when. Hopefully they listen to me and they figure this out. But I need a break, and you need a break too because I have more for you here with the breaks, baby. Catch you in a minute. What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Brown with the LA Sparks, and you're watching Infanity TV. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back here with the breaks with yours truly, Michael Matthew here. And I'm not done, man. I have to continue to fight for these running backs because nobody's doing it. This is how bad it is for the running backs, everybody. Um, the running backs are making less um, money than pos all positions other than punters, long snappers, and fullbacks. Kickers are making more money than running backs. It's getting really bad. We know that the running back position is very important. You hear that a lot of the running backs have created a text thread where they're texting each other to figure out a plan that they can get their uh, just, you know, their, their due. They're like, we're important. No matter what you say, you need a running game. I don't give a damn how great your passing offense is. If you can't run the ball, it's going to be tough for you to win because you need a balance. I can't tell you the last team that just came out and threw the ball, threw the ball, threw the ball, and couldn't run the ball that won a Super Bowl. It's, it's not realistic. Once a sucker, of, of course, if you if you run the ball and you know that's all you can do, you're going to struggle because you need balance. So just passing won't help you. Just running won't help you. You need them both, and that's why you need to pay these running backs. But, man, with football season so close, training camp is here. Everybody's preparing for this long, long journey. I have to talk to you guys about my top five. You know I like doing my top fives here. So I have to give you my top fives for the most iconic stadium. So for you guys who travel to different cities to go and watch games, these are the five stadiums I believe that you have to go and check out a game in. Number one, 
Lambeau Field, the Green Bay Packers. It's super easy. So much history there. The uh, place of Bart Starr, uh, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. The Lombardi is named after the great Vince Lombardi. So you have to go to uh, this Packer Stadium, Lambeau Field. It is amazing. It will be the top of the class when it comes to all the stadiums in the league. Number two, Arrowhead Stadium. The best fans in the game. Number one fans in the game. The Chiefs crowd is always the craziest. Now they have Patrick Mahomes there, so they are two-time champions and recently. Of course, they had the Super Bowl way, way back with Lynn Dawson. Um, they had the great run in the 90s, but now more than ever, because this team is competing for a Super Bowl year in, year out, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri is to another level. That's number two. Number three, Heinz Field, uh, another legendary place. The Pittsburgh Steelers, um, you know, some big-time football there. You get a lot of the AFC North uh, coming in there and battling them there. It's a field that, you know, I remember from the early 2000s when Tommy Maddox was there from the XFL and he was balling out. You had Bill Cowher being the head coach there. Then you draft a young Ben Roethlisberger, and they helped take that building to the next level. Number four. I have to do it. It's America's team, AT&T Stadium, the house that Jerry built. It is an amazing stadium to be inside of, the big screen. Just It's, it's, it's a billion plus dollars. Real money is into that stadium, so you have to check it out. And I know me being in L.A., I could be biased and say so far because it's also one of the most beautiful uh, stadiums that you will see in the land. But I'm going to go Mile High Stadium. Uh, the Denver Broncos, they've been balling out there since, you know, the 90s with Elway, Terrell Davis, Shannon Sharp and that group. Now with Russell Wilson, they're hoping to turn things around there in his second year. Peyton Manning played a couple years there, played in two Super Bowls. It's a beautiful stadium as well. And when guys come in there, they have to get used to, um, you know, everything that's there when it comes to uh, Denver and Mile High Stadium. So those are my top five of the most iconic. I know Seattle. I'm so sorry I left you out. But these, these are my top five, damn it. But you guys can let me know down below in the comments. What do you think? What are your top five most iconic stadiums in the NFL today? Let me know. And before we switch gears and got to talk some basketball, I have to talk about what I'm very excited to check out this year in the NFL world. And it is the best throwback jerseys in the NFL. Hell, they may be the best throwback jerseys in all of sports. Yes, I said it. And this is why I give you love, Seattle, because the Seattle Seahawks this year are going to wear their blue jerseys with the silver helmets. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and look them up. You can find it on Twitter. They're posting about it. Go and look up some old footage of Warren Moon wearing his jersey. They were always beautiful to me. Once the Seahawks switch gears to, you know, the more darker blue and like the lime green you know it was cool to me but there's nothing like these jerseys these throwbacks are amazing so make sure that you guys go and check them out because i cannot wait for them to wear these jerseys and shout out to the buccaneers you know they're going to be wearing their cream sickle jerseys and the vikings are going to be wearing their throwbacks but it's all about these seahawks jerseys baby i love them i love them i love them but we got to talk about some hoop so i have to break away with you and it's time for the breakaway Reporting, you know how I gotta start this. Cleveland, this is for you. That is what the Cleveland Cavaliers are screaming after they won the Summer League Championship. I still can't believe that they give these guys rings. It's just a summer league, but you know Cleveland is going to celebrate whatever championship they can receive. Shout out to Imani Bates because the guy balled out. He played some great basketball, Isaiah Mobley, but I'm really focusing in on Bates because a few years ago, he, of course, he was on Instagram, Twitter. He was a superstar in high school. It didn't go how it was a supposed to go there at Memphis. He ended up at Eastern Michigan and had to do his thing. He was drafted in the second round, but he had a hell of a run in the summer league, averaging around 17 or 18 points. He could be a huge steal for the Cleveland Cavaliers if he can accept his role as a bench scorer, catch and shoot guy. He can be a great, great steal for them. So I love this for Cleveland. Congratulations on your summer league 
championship because you may not be winning another championship anytime soon unless it's the summer league, just to let you know, Cleveland. But kudos to you guys for taking care of business there in Vegas. Uh, Daryl Morey, he said he is looking to honor James Harden's trade request, but is looking for pieces that could come in and uh, keep them in the championship race. They don't really want to trade James Harden if James shows up and says, hey, I'm here, I'm going to play. They're going to stick it through. This is what Murray is talking about, the GM there with the Sixers. But he said, hey, if we're going to trade him, we don't want no scrubs. We want somebody that could come in here and compete. We have the MVP. We have Tyrese Maxey. Uh, we have some players and pieces there that can win a championship. We just need some guys or a guy that can come in for Harden that can help put them over the top. So I'm going to make sure I'm monitoring that situation for you guys. And DeAndre Ayton. He is looking to prove to everyone that he is a baller. He is coming out and he's saying, I can feel the whole world hating me. My goal this whole summer is to change to na uh, the narrative. And he's damn right. You're, you're not just some guy that was drafted late in the lottery, end of the first round. You were the first overall pick, DeAndre Ayton. Everybody expects more from you. You're playing with KD. You're playing with Devin Booker. Now Bradley Bill. If you can be that anchor and that guy that is competing with all of the top bigs in the league, whether you're scoring, whether you're playing defense, whether you're rebounding, you can help your team win an NBA championship. So I don't give a damn if you're saying people, the world is hating on you. You're supposed to show up and ball out and last year you didn't do enough man so you have to figure this out um and you know i have to talk about lebron james before we get up out of here because um before we go to this break because people are saying his best teammate people are saying that Kyrie may be the best uh guy to ever you know play uh the game of basketball when he has the basketball in his hand even lebron agreed but people are talking nonsense when they're coming out and saying that Kyrie is his best teammate hell he's not even the best guard lebron has ever played with and i love Kyrie's game one of my favorite players today but do people forget that LeBron James played with Dwayne Wade, one of the top 75 players ever, one of the top three shooting guards to ever lace up their sneakers on the floor. D. Wade was a baller there in Miami. Yes, he dealt with some injuries and things like that, but he took a step back. He could have went out and averaged 25 plus as he, if he wanted to. We saw what he did the first year playing with LeBron, but he had to take a step back to let LeBron be LeBron, but still scoring 20 points a game, still being that leader teaching LeBron James this is what you have to do to win. So put some respect on D-Wade's name because without D-Wade, LeBron wouldn't have those two championships that he won in Miami. And hell, if he didn't win with Miami there, maybe he would have never gotten a championship. We would never know. But D-Wade was a key piece and figure with that team. But hey, I got more for you. You guys need a break. I need a break. And make sure that you guys get you some snacks, some water, because I got more for you here with the breaks, baby. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams.
United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Welcome back here for the home stretch for this episode of The Breaks. Well, yours truly, Michael Matthew here. And, you know, still got some more hoops to talk about. Let, let me let me know what you guys think. Is Kyrie Irving the best guard that uh, LeBron James has ever teamed up with? Or is it D-Wade? Let me know which side you're on. Team Wade, Team Kyrie. Let me know down below in the comments. Um, and I have to talk about this situation. Draymond Green versus Jordan Poole. And his dad, this is getting out of hand. Uh, much respect to you, Draymond Green. You're a hell of a player on the court. You're an important piece to the, the Warriors dynasty. You're doing great when it comes to your, you know, your media uh, run. But enough is enough. This situation should be dead and gone. You're still talking about the situation. It's getting ugly with now Jordan Poole's dad getting involved. You need to just let this go. The situation happened. Jordan Poole is no longer with that team. Nobody wants to hear more about it. So Draymond Green... Let this thing go before it get out of hand because we don't want to see that. We want to see you focus on hoop, see if you can help get the Warriors back to another championship, and let Jordan Poole go over there to Washington and see if he can average 20-plus and become an all-star player because the past is the past, and we have to let it go. So I hope you do the same, Draymond Green. Uh, the second half of the WNBA season is here. And I have a few questions that I hopefully I will find out in the second half. How many more L's will the Aces take? They, they only have two losses so far. Um, will they only stay at two losses? Will they go on a crazy, crazy run? I think that they might get another two losses as well. But they're going to continue the ball. They're going to continue to dominate it. Uh, dominate, and I have my eyes on them. Uh, will it be the Liberty or the Kinetic Sun to emerge as their biggest threat going over into the playoffs? We're going to see. We see Sabrina's ready to go after breaking the three-point shootout record, scoring 37 points at the uh, three-point shootout there with the WNBA All-Star Weekend. So I like the Liberty a lot. I think if they can figure it out and continue to play more and more and get that chemistry, that they're going to be the toughest out when it comes to the Aces. But we'll see. But here in Los Angeles, can the Sparks make a run with their returning guards. Lasia Clarendon is back. Um, Lexi Brown is back. Earlier in the season when they had these ladies playing, the team was a top five seed. Now they're placed right now, I believe, in ninth. So let's see if they can make a run and get up closer to that, you know, six or fifth seed and become a very tough out because if they can ball out with NECA, who's playing some of her best basketball of her career, and then you have some of the young players who have been getting uh, some run that should be ready to go. They, they have – you know, they got some practice in, which Coach Miller has been begging for. So let's see if the Los Angeles Sparks can make a run the second half of the season. But you know I have to talk about more than hoop and football here because Messi, Messi will be playing his first game tomorrow with Inter Miami. I am so excited for this because he's in the States, ready to go. Uh, he's going to be playing against uh, uh, the Mexican team, Cruz Azul in the 2023 Leagues Cup. It is going to be big time. It is going to be his debut. I know everybody is already talking about it. Everybody's got to have their eyes on it. He's going to play, they say, around 20 or 30 minutes. But I am praying, I am hoping that we can see a Messi go in his first ever MLS game. Please, if we can get that guy, it will be legend. Dairy, man, but I, I got to talk to you more than just sports because, you know, it's a lot going on when it comes to the culture and everything. Somebody that's breaking the rules. I'm sad to say I have to talk about it because it was a story I was going on. Carly Russell. 
was lying. Everyone thought she was kidnapped. It was a situation everybody was monitoring. But after, you know, hearing from, um, you know, the, the district attorney, uh, they are saying that she may be lying about this whole situation. And it's just a very, very bad look because black women are, you know, missing left and right. I believe it's like 13,000 women that are still missing. And for you to come out and lie um, this is such a crazy situation. So I'm hoping that we hear it from her, hear her part of the story, because it just looks really, really bad. So that's who's breaking all the rules this week. It is Carly Russell. Shame on you coming up with this story. Uh, you know, she needs help, uh, whether she got kidnapped or not, but she needs help, especially if she's lying about this, because why would you come up with this crazy story? Before we get out of here, shout out to Drake. Uh, his it's all a blur uh, tour is going on. It's going crazy. It's going up. You're seeing all these videos all over social media. He's doing his thing. Tomorrow we got some new Nas and Hit Boy. Another album, Magic Two, is coming out, and it is one of the greatest runs. Rapper producer Nas. They gave us Three King Diseases, Magic, and now Magic Two. I expect it to be great, and I can't wait to tune in. And I have to give another week of giving a uh, shout out to Jay Z. Another milestone for this man the guy becomes the first black male artist to earn 10 double platinum albums 10 double platinum albums i guess is why he throw up the rock because it's the 10 baby so shout out to jay-z shout out to you for tapping in with me thank you for giving me some of your time this thursday friday saturday sunday whenever you tap in to your favorite show the breaks i will catch you next week with more to talk about when it comes to sports and culture because i am here michael matthew bringing you your favorite show on the land these are the breaks catch you next week baby Peace.